Hi guys. It is an absolutely, and I mean spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York where it is I think about 70 degrees here. 70 degrees on Saturday, August 14th 2021 as once again the Finger Lakes of New York turned out to be probably the most gorgeous spot on planet Earth today and uh, I have a bunch of people getting ready to pour into bugs in a jar farm to go camping and tiny housing and so I might have this rant interrupted but while I'm waiting around for that uh, do what I always do here, and that's chronicle the collapse of global industrial civilization and a planet. Now, I want to thank all of the various tribes members. Oh, yeah, while I'm thinking of it, Frederic Poulet, I have been meaning to say thank you very much for your continuing support of Collapse Chronicles. I've been meaning to tell Frederick that for days and anyone else who has ever supported Collapse Chronicles, thank you as well. But anyway, uh, several of you have uh, sent me this story from Vox titled, It's Time to Freak Out About Methane Emissions. This lesser-known greenhouse gas will make or break a decisive decade for climate change. Anyway, guys, uh, I think I'm going to save this one, this newest methane bomb story from Vox. Good Lord, we're going to come back to it tomorrow for our Sunday Doomsday Sermon, I believe. Uh, come back to the methane bomb. We're just going to do what I frequently do here on uh, Saturday is just go through the <coughs> mainstream media news. And just so you guys know, this is not, all right, this is not the special collection of stories that Yahoo News picks out for doomers. This is just out of the, just right out of the Rolodex of news stories right now on August 14th, 2021. Uh, anyone who acts like the mainstream media uh, is not sounding more and more uh, like the doomosphere. Many uh, versions of this story July was the hottest month in recorded human history, report says, and right off the top, that's a, a misleading story. Now, it might be true, but if you really get into it, it is the hottest month ever recorded since they started recording the average monthly temperatures, I believe, 142 years ago. Last month was not only the hottest July on record, it was also the hottest month ever recorded on Earth, according to a new report by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, so, quote, Quoting NOAA Administrator Rick Spinnard, this new record adds to the disturbing and disruptive path that climate change has set for the globe. So the northern hemisphere's land-only surface temperature was 1.54 degree C above average in July. Also, the hottest ever recorded and topping the last record set in 2012. Asia marked its hottest ever July. Europe marked its second hottest July. Uh, North America, South America, Africa, and Oceania all registered in the top 10. With this July data in hand, 
it is very likely that 2021 will be one of the top 10 hottest years since records began 142 years ago. And uh, then we go over for a story that I've been waiting for, you know, the old climate refugee moving in from, uh, I am a climate refugee from the state of Texas, uh, living up here in New York, at least in the summer. And I've been waiting for this headline, climate change is leading many Americans to look for new places to live. And I keep saying that at it, some point, at some point, you are going to see more and more people uh, moving out of the South. All of this North-South migration is going to turn around and uh, people are going to start heading back north. Unfortunately, there's almost nothing in this story. It's like somebody came up with the same idea I did. Climate change is leading many Americans to look for new places to live, and then they never define many. And then, of course, uh, next to that story, but I don't have it flagged here, uh, they start, you know, they're looking at the U.S. census data, you know, taking it apart. Well, guess, uh, the, like, two of the fast, the two fastest growing places in the country in 2020 last year. So they have this bullshit uh, headline, and then the U.S. census data, as they say, I'm sorry I don't have it called up, but I know I remember this correctly, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona, I, I can't remember, was it the most people moving to Phoenix? And then the other, the fastest growing spot in the country was a few miles from my place in Florida, which I cannot turn to, is this uh, place called the Villages in Florida. So, uh, where are people, according to the U.S. Census, uh, people are pouring in to Phoenix, Arizona, of course, Austin, Texas, where I just got the hell out of, all over the state of Florida, New York, law, the state of New York, where it is 70 degrees today, on August 14th, lost more people more people moved out of New York last year than any other state, most of them heading south. Now there is an asterisk that what a lot of that was because of, you know, corona panic, people moving out of New York City, you know, just a few miles outside of New York City into other areas uh, to get out of the city. Uh, but I see almost no evidence showing that climate change is leading many Americans to look for new places to live, although it will be soon enough. Okay, I did enjoy this one from Business Insider. The media frames the climate crisis as hopeless, but that's because they're hiding these solutions. Yes. Uh, who was this? This is written by P.E. Moskowitz, uh, who runs Mental Health, a newsletter about capitalism and psychology. This is an opinion column. The thoughts expressed of those of the author, not necessarily Business Insider. Yes. Okay, we're just going, uh, we're going to read the opening three paragraphs of this. The climate crisis news is constant. Wildfires start earlier and earlier in their year in California. Extreme weather floods places not built to ex handle extreme weather. The Arctic is melting and the world keeps getting hotter. All with 
no signs of stopping, and now the UN has said we cannot avoid many of the worst impacts of global warming, no matter how hard we try. Given the overwhelming negativity of the news, it makes sense that people are either in denial about the magnitude of the problem or end up feeling <coughs> hopeless, defeated, and without recourse. Yes, the media, <coughs> it's the, it is the mainstream media, the media has spent the last few decades simply convincing people the issue is real. But that war has been won. Only 10% of Americans now do not believe the climate crisis at this point. So, Book Harmony, you are now in the final 10%. Now we face a new problem. None of us know what to do. Yes. No one, but, but you know, I don't understand this. This PE guy claiming that the media offering no solutions. What the hell is he talking about uh, r right here? Uh, activists, you know, those doomers, this is from Huff Post, those doomers call it a, quote, false solution. But UN scientists say, we need to suck up CO2. Yes. And when acting like there is uh, no solutions, when you have one right here. Okay, going back to this new code red for humanity. The planet is, on average, two degrees Fahrenheit hotter than it was in the last century. And even if we magically halted all emissions tomorrow, humanity has spewed enough carbon dioxide into the atmosphere to lock in dangerous climate effects for the next 30 years. Avoiding climate catastrophe at this point would require, but I guess will require, removing carbon from the atmosphere. Yes. The Earth naturally absorbs carbon when plants and algae photosynthesize, but the long-awaited report from the IPCC makes clear that averting catastrophe now will require us to develop measurable, surefire ways to suck CO2 from the air and return it to the ground. Yes, many of the tools scientists say we'll most likely need, however, are nascent, N-A-S-C-E-N-T, which I guess means pie in the sky. Is that what nascent means? And this approach has been controversial among environmentalists who fear that fossil fuel interest would have policymakers focus on draining atmospheric CO2 by sucking it out of the air. So the pumping and burning of oil and gas can continue. And there you go. It, it, it is written into the cards. And then, of course, we have the solution of electric cars saving the planet all over. They mean, how can this guy say the mainstream media? So I love this one. Directly from Yahoo, Yahoo News today, sounding like bright green lies. Are electric cars really a climate game changer? Yes, I think we've had this. Uh, rant before, uh, why there's debate. There is little doubt that the market for electric vehicles is growing. There is debate, however, over whether zero emissions vehicles can deliver 
on the promise to dramatically curb climate change. Skeptics worry that too much faith is being put into a theoretical electric vehicle revolution. The production of electric vehicles carries its own toll, including destructive mining needed to extract minerals for batteries. Others say even a rapid transition to electric cars would be insufficient unless it is accompanied by equally aggressive moves across the transportation industry and the broader economy. And don't forget the fact that electric cars can only make an impact if enough people drive them. I love that knee slapper. But of course, who needs electric cars when we have hydrogen power cars? You can go on to YouTube and look up Jack Nicholson's hydrogen power car in 1978. In 1978, Jack Nicholson was driving around his electric car talking about, I mean his uh, hydrogen power car, talking about how hydrogen powered cars were going to save the planet. Back in 1978, here it is, 2021. And what is the latest research on Jack Nicholson's plan to save the planet? Study shows hydrogen made from natural gas, which is the way hydrogen is made, is dirtier than burning the natural gas directly. Hydrogen has long been considered to be an alternative fuel that could help stem emissions from cars, trucks, planes, and other forms of transportation. However, a new study reveals that the ways in which we manufacture hydrogen in the United States may actually be more damage to the environment than good. There you go. Uh, anyway, guys, we could go on with these solutions that the media is hiding. All right, but let's just uh, let's just take a little trip around the world. I don't know, guys. I just uh, we're just gonna pick three stories at random. Okay, let's go over to China. China, there's. Uh, a couple of people have sent me this thing. I, I know Realize, Realize, Realize was showing me this about this, whatever this thing is over in China. It, it's some, it, I don't even know what the hell the thing is, saving the planet. But uh, that's another rant for another day. We're going to go over to Reuters News. China cranks up. China cranks up carbon-intensive projects as climate crisis grows. China announced scores. A score is 20, so scores is a minimum of 40. China announced scores of new carbon-intensive coal and steel projects in the first half of 2020. One research showed on Friday, just days after a key UN report urged immediate global action to curb the use of fossil fuels and prevent runaway climate change. The push comes as climate experts exhort governments around the world to take drastic action amid increasingly widespread Extreme weather events like deadly wildfires, droughts, and even central China's highest rainfall in 1,000 years. Events that experts say are directly linked to human impact on the environment via carbon emissions. Yes. Uh, Do you think so? During the first half of this year, China, the world's biggest coal consumer and the biggest source of climate warming greenhouse gases, 
announced plans to build 18 new coal-fired blast furnaces, more than they built in the whole of last year. Yes, another 43 coal-fired power plant units were also proposed. So, I mean, 43, 61. That is three score. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay. What is going on in Russia? We looked at China. Let's go over to Russia. Largest wildfire on Earth sends smoke streaming into the North Pole. The wildfires currently burning in Siberia are the largest on Earth and are causing smoke to trickle into the North Pole. According to NASA, this is the first time this region has experienced wildfire smoke in recorded history. Yes, an image from a NASA image from August 6 shows that the entire country of Russia was blanketed in smoke due to hundreds of boreal forest wildfires burning in the north. Many regions of the planet are currently experiencing abnormally severe and historic wildfire activity, including Turkey, Greece, Brazil, and parts of North America. Yes, several of these wildfires ignited as the respective regions experienced scorching heat waves and drought conditions. And we're going to wind up somewhere off the coast of China looking at the stunning photos of a 34,000 ton cargo ship that snapped in half off of Japan's coast. A 33,910 ton cargo ship carrying 21 crew members ran aground and split into two pieces off the Japanese coast. The Crimson Polaris, a Panamanian flagship, ran aground on August 11. Uh, about two and a half miles from Haichoe Harbor in northern Japan. Uh, the ship was carrying wood chips from Thailand. 34,000 tons of wood chips from Thailand and was nearing the end of its voyage when it became stuck in the shallows after it broke apart it left behind a three-mile oil slick in its wake. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, we can go on and on with this. Uh, guys, Uh, who's feeling hopeless around here? It is a gorgeous 70 degree day in August. Uh, I have money rolling in from Airbnb and uh, the pole bean harvest is coming in. Good God. I'm heading out for my with a five gallon bucket for my first real harvest of pole beans. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with 200 pounds of pole beans. But anyone who likes those climbing pole beans knows where to find me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. We got 2,000 ears of Silver Queen corn I'm getting ready to come in. So I'm going to get out there and enjoy this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous 70 degree day in mid-August at Bugs in a Jar Farm 
while I still can. Bye, guys. And if you were at Bugs in a Jar Farm with me, you could be out here enjoying this gorgeous day with me and the little dog. Bye, guys.